our opponent has the Besage Duel. We'll say yes to this. And then on our opponent's incept, we'll be like, no you. How about that? <laughs> How does it feel when you get a taste of your own medicine, opponent? You know what? I take it back, Cultivator Colossus. You're welcome in this opening hand. For once, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> Hello and welcome guys. We are here with another league. This time we're not going as all in on the card Spelunking as you may have seen me play in the past. This is more or less your standard annual Titan list plus two copies of Spelunking. Some lists opt to play the Spelunkings in the sideboard to bring in for Force of Vigor matchups or sometimes you see two Spelunking main and like one sideboard something like that but we're not going with that. I decided to put together what I think is the most representative current stock list for Amulet after the release of the new Ixalan set. And that includes making some card choices that I otherwise usually usually wouldn't play. And that includes the card Golgari Rot Farm, for example. I prefer to play up to four Selesnya Sanctuaries, but it's very popular to play a couple of Rot Farms. And so I went and a Writing Fountain in the sideboard as well is another uh, example of a card that I would not usually typically play myself. However, we have access to these cards because I wanted to address a follower who was asking questions about Red Face Menace, what is the current stock? What should I, you know, base my deck list off of moving forward? And so this is the list I've put together. Obviously, you can choose to change it to your liking. I should also point out that we are playing 61 cards, and that's because I wanted to fit in the Azusa that I also usually wouldn't play, but is pretty typical in a stock list. And believe it or not, at this current moment in Amulet history, it's pretty common to play 61 or more cards, but at least 61 cards. Of course, you probably already know that Dom Harvey made it to the top four of the most recent Pro Tour with a 61-card amulet deck. So it's kind of the new hotness right now, and there's not a whole lot of downside to it, especially since we have cards like Cultivator Colossus or Splunking that we don't want to draw necessarily multiple copies of and are better off, you know, being pack targets or something like that, you know, especially with extra cards like the Tarrasque in the sideboard, which is a card that you may not have seen before, so I'll introduce it. It's a 9-mana 10-10 that has the following text, Haste and Ward 10 as long as it would cast. And when it attacks, it fights target creature defending player controls. And the reason we're playing this is almost and only specifically because of the deck four color. The Trask is very good against that deck because they rarely have 10 mana to be able to actually just deal with the Trask. And on top of that, when we attack with the Trask, the same turn that it comes out, it can also be used to kill an Elish Norn by making the Elish Norn fight the Trask and let us have a way to win through Elish Norn, which is something that I'm interested in. And, uh... The only other card that I think is particularly interesting here is the inclusion of a Worm Coil Engine in the sideboard, and this is just basically something that we have to deal with Blood Moon decks, having a threat that we can play against Scam that does not get Blood Mooned out of the game and allows us to establish a board presence, gain some life back, help us offset our life loss from the ring. For example, we have Worm Coil Engine for that purpose. Everything else is pretty much stock, so... I mean, like, literally, that's the whole point of the deck list, so... I guess... With that, we'll jump straight into match one here. All right. And we are in here for match one. We'll be on the play. So a little big for my taste. I'll just shorten that. There we go. So we have a turn one amulet into turn two potentially ring if we want to play turn two ring or turn three ring and just try to make some land drops. I mean, we're definitely keeping this. Need some extra green sources, but to turn two the ring, we have to lead on Basaju amulet and then grazer in Boros and play Boros again for turn. We could do that, or we could just be patient and wait until turn three. It's unlikely we need the protection from ring on turn two, but it'll be interesting to see. Street Wraith. Ugh, if this is living in, that's not good. Stomping Ground, Asmore. Interesting. Okay, so we're playing against a cookbook deck with Asmo and Street Wraith. Dryad is a great pickup. So now I'm going to do that over anything else. This sets us up for the Titan next turn. I guess technically Cavern is a green source for Titan if we just name Giant here. So not too worried about that. See if our opponent wants to commit a cookbook. Urza Saga, not surprised to see that one in a cookbook deck. The Swing with Asmo. Well, let's not lose our Dryad to a Bolt for no reason. That doesn't seem wise. As long as we don't draw Slayers or Vesuva here, we can haste. Sun Home doesn't matter as much because we're not trying to combo with that. Well, I think, I mean, obviously our opponent can just discard something with the cookbook and then untap and then discard again and kill something. But, I mean, we got to play Titan, right? Set up Valkut even if our Titan were to die. And we'll float with our Cavern here. Don't need to worry about it getting the Titan getting countered, so not going to bother with it. It just makes me have to click every individual mana. We want to leave Green Source in play for paying for Pact in case our Dryad were to somehow die. Or we were to just win immediately. <laughs> That's fine too, I guess. <laughs> All right. So playing against Asmo, so obviously we're going to want this member. We don't yet know if they're playing any sort of reanimation package. I'm feeling like it's unlikely. 
EE is also good against Asmo, so I think we're bringing in these. We can also EE on one to sweep up a bunch of cookbooks, which I like. I don't mind the idea of Warm Coil Engine against them. I don't know how good it will be. It's kind of a slow threat, but it is good. Endurance is probably not worth it. I don't feel like they're fast enough to warrant Radiant Fountain. But say you'd hit Cookbook or Sagas is interesting. I don't know if it's necessary. It's debatably better than a Cavern, so I think we can make this swap. I don't know that I care for Bog or Endurance until we see more dedicated uh, Graveyard strategies going on over there. We can trim Colossus. Actually, now I think about it, if our opponent has Asmo in play, Colossus going over the top of one or two Asmo activations potentially could be a big game. So let's not let's not trim that one. I don't even know what we want to cut here. Probably another Cavern. We could trim on Saga if we suspect Might or like um, Alpine Moon. So I think for that reason, we can at least trim Saga. Maybe just cut two Sagas in a map. And then we just got to cut two more cards after that. I feel like we don't need the third Besaju. Down to 28 lands is kind of low, though, not going to lie. Maybe we only go with two Dismember, two Explosives to answer the four Asmos they have in deck and then call it like this. I like it. Huh. Interesting hand. Well, if they have an early Asmo, we can dismember it. We have a ring to eventually build towards. We don't have any ramp, but we're on the draw. Like, I don't really know what else we'd be looking for. This hand's obviously really bad if they're on an Emrakul, like, graveyard-based combo deck, but... We're not really putting them on that. We also have Dismember for Ragavan if they're playing Ragavan. I think we're going to keep it. It's a little slow, but I think it might get there. Mountain DRC. Okay. I don't think we care too, too much about that one. Not at the moment, at least. We didn't bring in Bog to deal with DRCs. Now that we know they have DRC, things like Bog and Endurance are looking a little bit better. Hey, there's an Amulet. That is perfect for this hand. We will play it. Even though our opponent could have just like Greenland might blow up Amulet or some something like that. It'll be fine. <laughs> wow they actually have the might i i guess i'm a prophet what can i say <laughs> i still think we're more inclined to save this dismember for a potential asmo because this drc isn't super threatening <laughs> cultivator colossus haunting me as usual right, let's play out the growth chamber and pass there's a cookbook so if they go discard into asmo we'll be glad that we saved this dismember sadly we're two turns away from our ring ragavan dash i guess ragavan increases the clock a little bit and gives them some extra mana still not super afraid of what's going on here hey there's an untapped source so we can go untapped source untapped source into ring i like that play out the forest and pass here holding up this member apparently they didn't have the asmo that or they don't have a card they wanted to card at this point i'm feeling like not having the asmo yeah especially with daredevil uh coming down <laughs> definitely not having the asmo is more likely <laughs> Ragavan Dash. They don't seem to have much else going on. I'm kind of tempted to just dismember this Ragavan. I think I'm going to go for it. I don't think it's too greedy. This Ragavan is doing a, a decent bit of work for them, so we can also, like, end of turn Besaju the cookbook if we really want to. Don't know that we really want to, though, considering we want to be able to cast this ring, so we'll just pass. All right. Well, here's a ring. See if they have another Haywire Mike. Looks like our opponent's on Red Green Saga, by the way. I was expecting black mana, but they don't seem to have that. Pass back to them. We'll just calmly step our way towards Dryad and Valakut, marching towards the inevitable death of our opponent. We just really don't want them to get DRC online. They currently have Artifact and Land Creature, so Instant or Sorcery would immediately give them Delirium, which I'm not thrilled about. Amulet? Oh, another ring. That's interesting. We'll draw here. Might just Azusa and Untap Land. So if we play Bounce Land, Azusa, then we can go Forest, Land, and Dryad. I guess that's going to be the idea. Put Simic Ghost Chamber into play for T-West purposes. Actually, it might have been better to put Sanctuary, but it's all right. <gasps> no, I misclicked. I clicked the wrong freaking land. It was just a little off to the left. <sighs> that's really frustrating. Well, man, that's annoying. We would have been getting Valkatrys next turn. And we played around the Unholy Heat too. Gosh, that's the worst. Now they have Delirium. We might be very close to dead here, to be honest. Wow. That one little tiny misclick might be costing us the game. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Sorry, we had to give our opponent a chance, you know. At least our only last card is Daredevil, so... If their hand is just DRCs, then we might be okay. In fact, we can go Dryad into Land Land Titan Valakut stuff. So, putting ourselves dead to a bolt, though. Not much we can do about all that. Oh, we might be dead to our own ring if we don't kill our opponent. Now that I think about it. Did they draw Asmo? Of course they drew Asmo. This is the worst possible thing that could have happened. Although, admittedly, our Dryad would have already been dead by now. But, all right, we need to, we need to draw Amulet so we can do Colossus things, I guess. We need our ring and draw for turn to draw us into Amulet plus at least, like, a bounce land or two. Draw. Grazer. Okay. Let's go for the ring. Titan and some bounce lands, but no no amulet. Okay, so I guess we're going for a ring this turn. We'll keep the new ring. I don't know that we even want to draw with it, though, to be honest. We'll go, I guess, 
Saga, Dryad, a bounce land into play, Grazer, a land into play. Let them kill the Dryad if they want to. We need as much mana this upcoming turn as possible. All right, here we go. Might draw out our opponent's instep here with the ring and just go down to one. Probably not a bad idea. They kill our Dryad, that's fine. And by fine, I mean there's nothing we can do about it. So it is, it, it exists, it's there. I guess let's not yield because they might have like a might or something. I don't know why they would might our ring here, but they could. Oh, maybe it was, maybe we should have used this Besage like a million years ago. Just been blindly not Besaging. <laughs> I don't know if we ever had the mana to do so, but we don't have to block here because we have ring protection, so. All right, we'll draw with the ring, go to one, and see what's up. We need amulet. We would like to find an amulet of vigor. That is the idea. It's not super likely to find either. Oh, they have Galv Blast. All right, so we're just dead. I don't know that the misclick actually ended up costing us anything, to be honest, but it's debatable. Well, that was interesting. So they have DRCs and Ragavan. So Endurance as a flash blocker seems kind of interesting. And Bog as a tutor target for dealing with Unholy Heats and Delirium. Probably a good plan. Splunking seems good against them if they're going to be going after our Amulet. Summoner's Pact is good. Wormcoil doesn't seem as great against what they've got going on with Flyers and stuff. And Colossus maybe doesn't seem super necessary. Debatable. I guess Azusa is not great against Unholy Heat, so we can trim Azusa. Then one other. I don't know what the other card to cut should be, to be honest. I don't really want to cut anything at this point. Maybe it's just Saga, because getting Saga mited is just real bad. But let's just trim both Sagas and keep in, I guess, Beseju. I think I'd rather have the uh, Radiant Fountain than fourth Beseju, to be honest. We'll run like this. All right, we have Explosives to deal with things. Yet another kind of slow hand. We don't have a one drop. Kind of tempted to mulligan this. We don't have a three drop to play on turn three either. It's pretty greedy to mulligan this, but it doesn't really do much. If our opponent leads on Ragavan, we'll probably just have to play E on one and take, just like take a hit. I think I'm going to mulligan. All right, at least we have Spelunking for this hand. We'll keep this and bottom the Cultivator so we can pack for it if we need it. We'll lead on Radiant Fountain so we can pick it back up and gain some more life. I feel good about mulliganing into this hand. This is a bit better than the last one. They lead on Saga Path. It's a bit unusual. I guess setting up a turn three Haywire might. <laughs> Well, there's the missing one ring from the last hand. Now, this hand is officially just better than the last hand now. We'll pick up this Radiant Fountain and swing it back to them. We could potentially even just put in Bouncing with Splunking and then besage you their Saga if we're really afraid of what they're going to get. Pick up the Radiant Fountain, just go one ring into Titan. What is this? NT. Two mana, two, two. Whenever you attack, you may discard a card. When you do, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature. It gains trample until end of turn. Whenever you discard one or more cards, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until your next step. Interesting. Well, now that we have Vesuva, if the Splunking stays in play, we'll have Titan after this turn, even if we use the Beseju here. Um, but we'll also have a way to build into Titan if we're just playing Ring next turn. So I feel pretty good about just going Fountain, Spelunking, put in Gruel Turf, and then Beseju in the Saga. Generally, I don't think Saga is much of a threat, but I think here it makes sense. We'll have it enter on tap, of course. And we'll just pick up the Fountain here. And goodbye to Urza Saga. Pass back. Saga is going to get them either a cookbook to go with Asmo or... Uh, might to deal with Spelunking. Either way, it's a headache I don't want to have to deal with. This way they have to pay mana for things. <laughs> Swing with the NT first and foremost. Discard a card. I'm assuming. Daredevil, of course. They exile the Bloodstained Mire to the ability. So this is the one they can play until end of turn. Here's the Asmo. Definitely would have preferred to not have double cookbook in play when this Asmo resolved. So better that we besage there, I think. Unless they just have double cookbook anyways, which I suppose they could. We're going to be one short of EE -E on zero after playing and attacking with Titan, which is kind of sad. See if they have second cookbook. Looks like they don't. Makes things a little easier for us. Draw EE. -E. I think that would be the best possible. They don't have... Oh, Endurance is interesting. Hmm. Well, we can Fountain and play one ring, or we can just play and haste and attack with Titan, and then next turn they'll just be able to kill it, but we'll have already set up a Talari West by then. Interesting. Or we could just play the ring. If we play Fountain in the ring, the next turn we can set up Titan EE -E on zero and pop it so they lose all their food and Asmo, but then they'll still get to kill our Titan. I think it will ultimately give us more options down the line to have the Titan hasted and, and you know, attack now because we'll have more mana for the upcoming turn. Forces them to use their food tokens. So we'll pick up the Vesuva here. Titan. Spelunking looking great as an amulet here. We got our garrison and slayers coming right into play. Haste the titan, pick up the slayers. So we could just get T-West, blue bounce land, and pick up T-West. I don't think there's anything else that really makes sense here. We Alternatively, we could just besage you the underworld cookbook. That's bad if they draw another Asmo or another cookbook. But that's really about it. If we get T-West, we could just transmute for another threat, though, if we really wanted to. 
It uses up a lot of our mana, though. We'll have eight and nine mana next turn, so we could transmute and play one ring in the same turn, or transmute and cast Titan in the same turn. Pro I can't imagine T-West not being the right pick here, so I'm just going to pick these two. And the, the shortcut I'm hitting here to make the triggers go by as fast as possible is three, which is the, the button for yes. So I don't have to reach over here and, and click yes. Other oh, blocking with Asmo. I guess they have a bolt. That's interesting. I wasn't playing around that. Or bolt. Uh, now they have a keep. Okay. Well, we were F6, but it wouldn't have mattered because we don't have a card to pitch with Endurance. So it's all good. Trading with Asmo is not bad for us there at all. I guess we can't haste our Titan if we're transmuting and playing Titan this upcoming turn, but maybe that's fine. Getting Daredevil value here. Street Wraith is the exile. <laughs> that one's a bit of an onbow, huh? <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of hilarious. Here's another Asmo. I mean, we could just EE -E on zero and just slam the ring. I don't hate that. Inti's slowly growing into a problem, but maybe not the biggest problem. We could also just EE -E on one and give our opponent one more Asmo activation. I kind of, I'm not one, um, yeah, yeah, EE on one. I don't know that that would be better than just blowing up the second Asmo. I don't know what how likely they are to find a third Asmo. It's cool of them to be able to hit bobbles and play them for free off of the Inti, but Treat Wraith seems like a non-bow for sure. We're not at risk of dying life little wise here, thanks to our Radiant Fountain gains. All right, well, that's the end of our opponent's turn. <laughs> and we found a Summoner's Pact. Well, so we have 10 mana. We transmute EE on zero and pop it. And we have five mana left over. So I guess we're just doing ring this turn. Doing ring things. And we can't even get Thossies here. Thanks to the fact that we'll have ring protect. So I feel like this is a pretty easy approach to take. Goodbye to all the food tokens and the Asmo. I will not miss you. The, <laughs> they're gaining life with the food. Okay, sure. You can do that. That's the thing that you're able to do. Here's a ring. Gain five, no problem. Sorry, gain five, draw one. Oh, and another Titan. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty pretty stellar here. <laughs> and we have the surprise instant speed endurance if our opponent has another unholy heat as well, which is pretty sick. Our opponent can't even hard cast Street Wraith. Sad. Dude, that's weird. I hit Q to zoom in on the Street Wraith, and it's appearing on my other monitor. I haven't seen that. See, this one works, but if I do it over here, it's on the other monitor. That's so weird. Okay. They discard Shinka. Oh no, they exile Shinka, discarding the Daredevil. I, I sure know how these things work, 100%. We could probably just go Dryad into Titan, Dryad into Titan this upcoming turn. Yep, and we can haste off a double Valakut too. Probably getting a white floating, so we don't have to rely on Dryad to make the white mana is better though. Actually, no, we don't even have to do that, because if our Titan resolves and the lands go into play, they come into play on tap with Splunking. There's no amulet trigger where our opponent could respond. That's actually huge. Although if our opponent is heads up, then they'll just kill the Dryad in response to the Titan like ETB trigger. But even that is worse because then we can inform our decision based off of whether they kill Dryad or not. So that is actually kind of an upside. Opponent has Alpine Moon. See if they name Valcut here. Slayer Stronghold maybe. <laughs> there's a lot of good names, but I don't feel like there's a lot of names that are good enough. They do name the Stronghold. So we're not going to be doing any hasting. But uh, I don't think that we'll need to. If I'm being completely and frankly honest. They could have Besaidu, I guess. Besaidu on our Dryad would be annoying. I guess we can suss that out by just playing out a Valakut the, the natural way. I think I'm going for the Dryad here. I don't really see a reason not to. Oh, we have Cultivator. I thought for, for some reason, I thought I had boarded it out. All right, here's a Valakut that we'll have enter untapped. And we'll save targets upstairs and see if they have Besaidu for this Dryad. Unholy Heat, we can respond to by flashing and Endurance. I don't know that we have... Oh, yeah, we definitely have enough mana to Endurance plus Titan. Galv Black. That one I was not expecting. Uh, let's draw with the ring, I guess, real quick. <laughs> another Dryad. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, our opponent's not going to be happy. How about another Dryad? Is that is that one okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six if we copy Bounce Land. So I guess that's the play. I'm going to hit five. Uh, we'll have this enter untapped. And Titan getting second Valakut land will be enough to kill them. So I am just going to point these triggers up at them even though i literally just hit five to undo the auto yield because i didn't think it through and it went through that's good uh we'll just keep bounce uh, i guess uh the uh, vesuva in hand here here's one primeval titan and we have uh unholy heat covered as well so there we go all right well let's jump in here for match two all right match two on the play say yes to that one. Ooh, the zero lander mulligan all right, this hand is almost as a zero lander. We've only got two, which is not a lot. Probably bottoming a grazer if we keep this. We just have to, we would literally have to draw exactly bounce land for this hand to work. And even then, it's so like, let's say we bottom packed and we go turn one amulet. Next turn, we could like go bounce land for three, four, five and be one short. So we, this would be a turn three Titan if we found a bounce land. But if we don't find a bounce land, we would have to draw like land land ring to even be close to end the game. We're only like, 35-ish percent chance to hit a bounce land the next like three draws anyways because i've done the calculations before 
It's not a high chance. I think I'm just going to go to five. All right, this hand's a better five. Keep this. Probably bottom one of the forests and maybe cavern. It's either cavern or Beseju. I guess we actually could keep both and just bottom both forests and just hope not to play against Blood Moon. That way we have cavern if we're playing against control and Beseju if we need to interact. I don't hate that. Although we don't have the green for Beseju if we need to do that. Close, close. Uh, I'm just going to bottom the forest. We can always top deck a green source for Beseju. We're going to lead on Saga Amulet here. Saga can set up our expedition map to get Bounce Land if we need it. One Ring digging us out of this would be very nice. Now we're glad we kept the Beseju and we drew the Bounce Land too. Okay. Okay, I see what you're putting down, deck. All right, let's go Cavern naming Beast. No, let's go, let's name Giant, I guess, and pass. And we can besage our opponent's Saga if they're planning on getting an amulet out of this. So we can ruin their, their fun. If we top deck Titan here, then we can just cast it, which is also a thing. We can ring and besage our opponent this upcoming turn if we get to keep our Saga in play. That would be pretty sick. It's crazy how that mulligan to five and then just deciding what lands to keep has already made a huge impact, impact on how this match is playing. Because if I had bottomed the Besaju, we might in be we might be in bad shape here. Our opponent has the Besaju, it looks like. Well, let's hit five. We'll say yes to this. And then on our opponent's incept, we'll be like, no you. How about that? <laughs> How does it feel when you get a taste of your own medicine opponent? Except they have a Besaju still lurking in play, which I don't love. At least we get to play this one ring though. Copium. Alright. Uh we, I guess we kind of just leave Bounce Land in, in play here. We draw with our ring and pass it back. We, of course, immediately spike basically redundant bounce land off the top, which is great. So we have Titan in two turns now. Maybe next turn if we happen to draw the, the ramp spell and the Titan off of our three cards coming up. Our opponent has Splunky, which is very good. Oh, and they can pick up the Beseju and Beseju bounce land or amulet here as well. So they're, they're, they're getting there. How are we so behind? It's kind of shocking to me. Lose our life here. Beseju, probably the, oh, they, they go for the amulet. Okay. Honestly, deciding between Amulet and Bounce Land there is kind of rough. Grazer. Grazer. Well, no help there. Interesting. Well, let's Grazer in Vesuva copying Simic. So we're a little step closer to transmuting our T-West. I guess we could just play T-West here. Grazer in T-West as well, I guess. And we can pick up the T-West with the Sanctuary if we need to transmute. And we'll play out Forest here. Swing it back. No Titan from us is good news for our opponent. I guess it's probably most times correct to just hit the Amulet there, but putting us up to four mana seems kind of rough. Although most lists aren't playing Castle Garenbrig, so like, it's not like we could just play Garenbrig and slam a Titan after they did that Besaju, so. But back when lists were playing lots of Castle Garenbrigs, it would have been debatable whether you hit Amulet or the Bounce Land there. Opponent's making good use of Splunking. I'm not going to scoop here until we're actually dead dead, because we're about to be drawing four cards this upcoming turn. And our opponent can't, like, double haste and double strike or anything like that. Nothing crazy. They can set up a Beseju, but I don't know for sure Beseju is good enough. It probably is, because our out here is probably Dryad Valakut. It also depends on what our opponent sets up here. If they set up the Beseju, it would be pretty difficult for us to win, but not impossible. It would require a lot of mental gymnastics to get through our opponent here. It depends on if they even have another Beseju as well. Some lists only play two, some lists play three. If they don't have Beseju here, then we have a chance. Like, if they're just... Oh, they do have the third beside you. Yeesh. Okay. Well, I don't even know what series of draws we need here. Like, double amulet, dryad, titan, or something like that. We'll just take our grazer chump block. Sorry, boys. Sacrificed for the cause. Does happen on occasion. Born to die, sadly. Gotta keep our life funnel nice and high for this ring, you know? All right, we'll draw. Sun home, not super helpful. More rings, probably not good enough. Ugh, okay, so if we play a land and Titan, we can get Bounce Land Besaju. Alternatively, we could slam Ring and Transmute. Ring and Transmute doesn't seem too bad, because if we go Titan, get Bounce Land Besaju, they just Besaju our Besaju, untap, go for Dryad, and we're just dead. So that probably doesn't work. Play the Sanctuary and see if they want to respond to it. They could Besaju the T-West here. Giving them an awkward decision here. Our opponent's on the tank here about this. Uh, they don't respond. Okay, we'll pick up the Besaju. And we'll go ahead and transmute it. We could get Besaju here, but I feel like the pack is going to be better. And they're going to have their own Besaju up. So like packing for, I guess being able to pack for Colossus is actually pretty big. If we can go like double amulet into Colossus or something like that. Play ring. So which ring we choose to keep is interesting. Because technically this ring will draw us four cards. Whereas the one we're about to play now will draw us one and then another two cards of the next turn. So it's actually one less card to keep the new ring. So I think we're supposed to keep the old ring, but just get our cast trigger here, as weird as that is, and pass back to our opponent. Oh, wait, I don't know if I play land that turn. Eh, if we're going for Colossus, maybe it won't matter. <laughs> then again, maybe our opponent can go for Colossus too. <laughs> Although our Colossus is more likely to be lethal because ours might have Valka triggers attached to it, whereas our opponent, I guess they could, 
they can like do stuff like set up Colossus in a ring or whatever, and then put us in a similar position, and we're just like way too far on the back foot to do anything. But we're doing our best here, <laughs> doing our absolute best. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they don't have the mana to go for Colossus. They just go Simic T West, pick up T West. They have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have exactly enough to Colossus immediately without any ramp or land for turn. It's not looking great. <laughs> it's not looking great. Let's see if they find the line. Ottawara to bounce our ring. Hmm. That's interesting. Huh. They have Summer's Pack. See what they show us here. If they show us a Colossus, I think I'm just gonna... Ah, no, I guess I'll let them go through it. Because if they don't think to play a ring to get Valakut protection, then we might still be able to get there. But, hmm. I guess we could potentially have gone for Titan, Besage, you Spelunking. But that doesn't feel like a winning line either. Here's Colossus, to nobody's surprise. Our opponent has resolved the Colossus, and they're picking up lands now, I think. Yeah. Colossus has resolved, and this is the aftermath. Got like a billion lands in hand now. All bounce lands, of course. Oh, then they play the rank. That is good enough for me. That will do it. Yeesh. Okay. So we're playing against Amulet. We obviously want the forces and the Besaju. And what we do not want are the one rings. And we have to keep one extra, so I guess it's a dismember. It's either a dismember or cavern as an untapped green source. It's debatable which one is better, to be honest. I guess dismember is probably vaguely better than cavern, I think. Being on the draw here, or being on the play here, and then on the draw next game, if we happen to win this upcoming game, is going to be, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> All right, we are back here on the play after our opponent finished sideboarding. Oh, with a really weird hand. <laughs> we have three of the untouchable lands, and oh, I don't know why it doesn't, it doesn't rearrange cards correctly. Like I picked up the growth chamber and move it, and it moved the wrong card. We have three of the untouchable lands in hand is what I was going to say. We have Amulet plus Mycosynth, which is bad if our opponent has Force, weirdly enough. But we also have Besaidu to interact. But this is just awkward, dude. Like we don't want any of these lands in hand. Like zero of them. I'm going to mulligan to be honest. <sighs> opponent kept seven. This is not a super impressive looking six. We bought um like... Grazer, maybe have turn two Besaju, turn three Dryad, and just hope to spike a couple lands or like Amulet plus a bounce land. Kind of doable. We could also Grazer into turn two Dryad potentially and just bottom Summoner's Pack. But I don't love that. <sighs> Gosh, I don't love this hand. If we mulligan into like a Saga Amulet hand, we can outpace our opponent if they don't have Besaju or Force. If they do, we'd be in trouble though. They kept seven as well. This hand really doesn't feel like it does it, but a single bounce land gets us a Titan mana. I we can bottom Grazer and have turn three Dryad and then turn four Titan, but then if our opponent has to turn three Titan, we just lose. We might be forced to besage them, in which case we don't have the mana for turn four Titan. <sighs> I think we just got to go to five, to be honest. I kind of hate it, but all right, we have Force of Vigor, which probably makes this hand keepable, at least on the surface. Keep like this. <sighs> and I guess we're leading on Saga and just getting owned by anything that can kill Saga. Might even be bouncing just to pick up Saga here. <laughs> Yield until our opponent's in step, I guess. <gasps> no, 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 no. I almost passed the turn here. That would have been awful. Yeah, I guess we got to pick up Saga. None of that. None of that. Saga on to two. Another Saga. We can we can force these, which I will do. <laughs> Double Stone Rain for free. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I think that might be enough to win the game. <laughs> yeah, it seems not bad. We're going to play into force here ourselves because we haven't gotten force yet. That was a pretty good turn. <laughs> if there's any way to catch up on the Mold of Five, it's forcing your opponent's two first land plays. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Vesuva Saga. Shouldn't have played the Saga, obviously. Titan? <laughs> or something to kill the Saga? <laughs> Second Force. <laughs> oh, they do have the Force. Okay. So we have a game. Amulet. Interesting. Well, are we supposed to play the Bounce Land? I feel like we need to. We would have to draw exactly, like... Dryad or Azusa plus Titan to get punished for playing Bounce Land, whereas we can draw any land plus Titan in order to not get punished. I think we're more likely to draw any land than to draw exactly a three drop, I guess, or a Grazer or a Pact. I don't know. It's kind of a complicated situation, but maybe we don't have enough time to mess around either if our opponent just has an amulet. I don't know. We'll see. Any land plus Titan gets us there. Ah, we would have found the Dryad too. Bollocks. All right, here you go. Now we're two... Two cards away from Titan. Feels awful to make a choice and then immediately get punished. There's no way that we were supposed to know that this Dryad is on top of the deck, though. Oh, they have Dismember. Yeah. And also, Dismember is another reason to not rely on finding a 3-drop, because our 3-drop might not be long for this world. Hmm. Amulet. All right, all right, all right. So they have Bounce Land. Are they playing a ring here? Leaving Bounce Land in play. They they left rings in post-board. Interesting. Well, they'll probably get rewarded for that 
this game just because we can't really punish them on our freaking mobile five but generally ring is not great in the mirror but it's all right we'll just top deck titan next turn that's the plan if we top deck titan we might be able to win we need to start thinking about what we besage you if we top deck titan we could hit amulet or bounce land it also depends on what they play this turn but just like they hit amulet last game or uh, in our first game um i guess that would be last game just like they hit amulet before probably it's correct to hit amulet gosh it's not looking good probably has to be amulet with the dryad in play we just have to hope they don't have like untapped land untapped land titan with active ring hmm all right titan off the top dang it we're probably dead that's that's unfortunate <laughs> both sides had force and we mold the five and that's the whole game there's a bounce land they picked up forest and i'm assuming they're replaying forest so slow too i just want to be able to concede just play something opponent please please <laughs> Ugh. I promise you, I'm not being salty. We're five minutes ahead on clock because our opponent has been taking like 30 seconds every game action. And it's getting to me too. Okay, we got a summoner's pack. That's going to be good enough for me to scoop it up. That's all I need to see. Thank goodness. All right, let's jump in here for match three. All right, on the draw. Oof. Turn one saga and a turn three ring with stronghold in hand, but uh, it's workable. We'll try it. Could very quickly become a turn three cultivator colossus depending on what we draw. Our opponent plays Auntie's Hovel. Tapped. Okay, so we're playing against goblins. Fully on Saga. Speed will be important in this matchup. Another Auntie's Hovel revealing Snoop. Are we just getting turn three comboed? <sighs> okay. Well, we're going to hold on to the Grazer because we could potentially draw a Amulet and that would reward holding Grazer because it'll produce more mana for us. If we drew Amulet and searched for Amulet and went Bounce Land, Grazer, Bounce Land, we could then play Colossus and just like go mad it's probably probably better to go titan into colossus getting double bounce land i think that is assuming we even draw the amulet all right no combo attacking with the snoop is great news we love to see that right, best possible is amulet off the top matron searching for the other combo piece i'm sure Let's see what they get okay they got a munitions expert off of the matron spelunking is interesting doesn't really do what we want it to do here sadly i don't know why they didn't just go for the combo here weird because they could have matroned for the three mana card that combos with snoop i forget the name of it so if we were to spelunking and draw into exactly amulet like if we go bounce land spelunking and draw exactly amulet then we could combo this turn but if the top part of our 50 card library is not exactly amulet then we're not getting there so i feel like it's gonna be better to go for a natural spelunking instead and not plan to combo not punished okay so here's guess probably doesn't matter still want to hold grazer i think so we'll just put in sun home and then pass opponent has whatever this is on top zoyoa lava tongue two mana two two death touch legendary creature at the beginning of your instep oh it moved at the beginning of your instep if you descended this turn each opponent may discard a card to sacrifice a permanent it deals three damage to each opponent who didn't okay they're going aggro on us i guess and then holding up munitions expert on oh not even holding up expert Something tells me our opponent must not be familiar with this matchup. Don't know that we can punish them yet. So we have five, six, seven if we pack for another Grazer. We wouldn't want to pack for Zeusa because it could get bolted. But is it enough green? Go two green. Grazer down to one green. Oh, we have to get a Zeusa if we want to, if we want to get the Colossus with triple green. Which is interesting. I think we do though. Interesting. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to lead on Growth Chamber float and pick up the forest. And we're going to pack for a Zeusa. This is why we play one Azusa in the first place. And then we go Azusa leaving the green floating. We just have to have... Oh, our opponent's F6. All right, so we're good here. Bounce land, bounce land, grazer, put in bounce land. And now we get to pick up, I guess, Simic Growth Chamber and Colossus. Hold on, let me get this out of here. All right, let's put in Growth Chamber. And it's nice with Splunking because we can just put everything in untapped and not have to deal with all the uh, complexities. We'll name Giant to summon the, the Titan to the top of our deck here. No Titan. All good. So I guess we're done. Well, I mean, that was still a pretty good Colossus. Let's let's be honest. All right, we're going to float with Baseju and pick it up. And then we're going to pick up Slesnia Sanctuary. And we'll go Dryad. Ring and draw. Suva is not doing much. Probably should have ring and draw before Dryad so we could play Titan if we found it, but we didn't, so it's all good. Uh, we'll go Dryad, play Vaseju, play Vesuva as a copy of... Eh, we probably wanted to keep Vesuva in hand for Valakut, but that's all right. We'll just copy Saga, I guess, and pass to our opponent. Well, we're not losing the Summoner's Pack, that's for sure. The uh, aggressive plan here is not looking to pay off for our opponent. If they had exactly one more mana up, if they had land for turn there, we couldn't have gone for that line because the expert would have killed our Azusa with triggers on the stack. So now our opponent just has to combo kill us or uh, 
where we win, pretty much. So, assuming that we can top deck a Titan in three cards. Maybe not a good assumption. Well, top three cards plus another redraw from the One Ring. Opponent plays Aether Vial and Munitions Expert to kill a Dryad or something, I guess. I don't know. Yep. That's not going to do it. If our opponent had Matron for... um, Man, I can't think of the name of the card. It's been too long since I saw it. Boggart Harbinger. Boggart Harbinger is the name of the card. If they had tutored for that one with the Matron, then they would have already won by now. Draw with our ring. Hey, Pact and Valcat. Sounds good to me. Tap our sagas because we're not using them. We're not using those. What are you talking about? All right, here's one Valcat the Molten Pinnacle with a three along with it and a uh, save targets upstairs and an always yes and an always yield. Here's a Pact. We might even be able to kill them without doing anything by just playing land drops, but this is definitely the arbitrarily correct line to take. Am I right? Here is a Titan and another Valcat. Plus a bounce land to pick up the Vesuva. Let's go with Boros Garrison. We'll have them enter untapped. We'll put the Garrison on the stack and all the Valkas will auto stack. Another auto yes added to the list. And uh, we'll pick up this Vesuva. There we go. It's a sideboard. All right. Opponent probably doesn't have a lot of familiar familiarity with this matchup. All right. Opponent has Blood Moon and Aether Vial. So oh, unless they're playing the Mages instead of Blood Moons, which is possible. But I think it's eh, maybe it's not good to bring in Force, actually, because they usually play Mages instead of Blood Moon. But they could play Blood Moon. I'm going to bring in one Force. We'll bring in Besage you definitely and Radiant Fountain. Uh, Besage you to play around Blood Moon and Radiant Fountain because it's better than Cavern of Souls. Worm Coil Engine can win through Moon, but it cannot win through the combo. So probably don't care for that. Explosives, however, can deal with the combo by uh, putting it on two and killing Snoop. It's a little slow, but anything to get there is better than nothing. Leaving the Colossus in in case they have Necromancer on the sideboard is probably a good idea. Blanking seems great against them. Expedition Map and Saga has probably got to go. Although... Maybe this is a fast enough matchup we should just be relying on Saga, to be honest. It's really not the craziest thing in the world. Azusa is weak to their uh, munitions expert, so boarding that out makes sense to me. One ring is good against discard, but they're going to fast combo us before we even need to worry about this card, so boarding out ring seems good. What else? One more cut. Honestly, it might just be the Force. Let's just ignore Blood Moon for now, since we got a game at least. They're not going to Blood Moon us. They simply won't have it. I, I decree it now. Yep, Saga Amulet. And this is this is why you keep in the Sagas. If our opponent has the Blood Moon, we'll get got. But if they don't, then we have a turn three win. Also, I can't rearrange my cards now, which is... Oh, there we go. Right as I was about to complain, it decided to make me look like a fool. Thank you, Magic Online. Never change. Turn three Colossus looks pretty good here. Keep that one. Oh, I thought it was going to get Thoughtseize there. So this is the 1-1 Menace from the new set. Beginning of your end step, if you descended, put a plus one plus one counter on it. That is if a permanent was put in the graveyard. And then you can pay three and sacrifice it to give a creature minus X minus X where X is a tower. Okay. And it's a good card. Don't get me wrong. I guess this it makes sense why we'd be seeing goblins more with this one drop printed. Because it is a good one drop for goblins. I will give it that. Although it's a one drop that isn't red, which is a little difficult for their typical mana base. They don't usually play a super heavy black splash, but we're getting hit for two damage here. Oh no. Oh no. All right. We could just go all in against Blood Moon and just play Saga, or we could just play Forest. I don't feel like I want to play out the Dryad here and expose it to like a go for the third or something. It'll guarantee us mana production next turn, at least plus one mana with double amulet in play. So I guess the technically correct thing to do is to play Saga here in case they have like feed the swarm or something that can like kill our Saga here. So we'll be able to have one less turn on getting a second amulet in play and then just accept a loss to Blood Moon. I'm not opposed to that, so we'll go for it. Opponent has Expert. <laughs> they have to ping their own goblin. <laughs> I technically, I suppose they could perhaps, they could ping their own expert. Oh, they have the Blood Moon. Well, uh, I guess we have a basic force in hand, so we don't have to auto-scoop, but very close to an auto-scoop. If our opponent wins because of Blood Moon, I will cut from here straight to when they won. All right, we're dead. Cool, cool, cool. Like I said, if they had the Blood Moon, we would just die, but if they didn't, then we were going to win, so don't feel bad about that. So now we know they're on Blood Moon and not Magus, so Force is looking kind of more interesting, especially since it can, get, can hit Vile, so might as well have Force. Might be kind of a dead draw, though. Probably still want Dismember, I would have to imagine. Explosives just seems slow. Board like this. Again, keeping Colossus because of potential Necromanches. Especially now that they have to lean on a turn one one-drop Goblin that's black. Like, their black requirements are vastly increased by that, assuming they're building the deck properly, which means they probably can afford to support Necromancia as well. All right, on the play. This time we can't get Blood Mooned out of the game, at least before we get some of what we want going. Double Dismember, Double Amulet. We have the wrong Bounce Land, but it's still a Bounce Land. We'll keep this. We need a top deck Green Source plus a Threat, but I feel like we can manage to do that. Dismember to disrupt the Snoop combo. Very important. Opponent on the Mold of 6, Mold of 5. We'd like to see the Mold of 5 when we have Double Amulet and two Dismembers for Disruption. What we would not like to see is us missing on green source plus threat and them slamming Blood Moon before we get the chance to combo kill them. 
That would not be great, but there's not much we can do about that. It's all according to the top of our deck, so. All right, we'll lead on Forest Amulet Go. Opponent kept their five. Let's see what they got going on here. They have Auntie's Hovel tap. We're fine with Auntie's Hovel tapped. Besaidu is a good one. Play Amulet and Besaidu here, and then if we draw Titan, we just kill them next turn. I guess we don't kill them because we have Garrison in hand, but we at least get to play Titan and attack with it. If we draw like a Simic Growth Chamber, we could transmute. If we draw a Dryad, we can transmute. There's the Snoop, which we will not allow to survive. Let's insta dismember that right now. Get that out of here. That uh, Mog War Marshal on top, by the way. Hmm. I guess we keep the Talari West in hand because we could draw another Talari West. And then we want to transmute off the double blue. So it's literally a one out of one chance. But Or also, I guess, again, we could draw. I mean, if we drew Simic Growth Chamber, we'd be able to transmute anyways by playing Talari West. But there's the War Marshal we knew about. All good here. <laughs> Force of Vigor. Ugh. Are we playing the T-West out now? I feel like that can't be good. It does let us hard cast Force, which could be good against Blood Moon. I feel like we got to play around Blood Moon here. If we play Boros, the next turn, if we draw Threat, we can play tap uh, T-West, float two, and still be able to Titan. So I guess we're playing on T-West. We can go through some, we can jump through some hoops to play Dryad into Titan later on, potentially. Or like Grazer into Titan or something. Okay, not Grazer into Titan, but like Dryad into Titan would work. Holding up Force against a potential Blood Moon on their Mold of Five seems decent, so not going to yield through the turn here. See if they want to pay for their War Marshal. They don't. Very indicative of a possible Blood Moon, not going to lie. Or they just want to cast literally anything else. Still would love to draw a Titan. I will take a Titan any time. There's another War Marshal. That's fine. <laughs> We're getting hit by the 1-1s. One yep. You got me. Titan. Dryad. Okay, well now we can do some math. So we play Garrison, Float... Um, so we play Dryad, leaving QS up. Play Garrison, Float blue blue uh, so we can transmute immediately so here's what the problem is we can play out dryad and have guaranteed titan this upcoming turn or we can transmute now and have to top deck a land to be able to titan if we play out dryad or rely on it staying in play we get got by munitions expert so i feel like we're supposed to be transmuting this turn so we'll just play dryad we'll untap float blue blue and float with the tos actually hold on there's a better way to do this because we want to have dismember up as well if we can so we'll play garrison again is a land drop for turn and now we get to float this mana here pick up t west and transmute and now we have dismember up we get our summoners packed and have titan next turn if we draw any land if our opponent does play a blood moon we can force it or wait until we draw another green card we'd want to pitch to force they let war marshal go still no third land drop so far <laughs> how about the third war marshal i'm not very scared of that one i gotta say all right let's just top deck that land that we need huh can something go right for once, please? <laughs> I'm definitely... Well, okay. I'm not blocking here because they could have land bolt. And this three this three damage doesn't matter. So I'm just going to take it. And we found a land. Perfect. All right. We're good to go. Not going for Colossus here. <laughs> they know we have the Summoner's Pack too. So they could concede here if they wanted to. Not that they have to, but they are dead. Here's a Titan. We'll get Slayer's Valakut. And our opponent is super hyper very dead. Go save target upstairs. And that's the match. Okay, well, generally goblins is not a good matchup. If our opponent played correctly in game one, they would have they would have gotten us. <laughs> Cause we would have just lost to the combo in game one and then assuming they play the combo, which maybe they don't, I don't know. But we would have lost the combo in game one and then in game two just gotten blood moon out of the game. So although admittedly on the draw against goblins, I don't know that I would have or if we had lost game one on the play, I probably would have kept it in the Sagas. But on the draw, it's a little more debatable. Anyways, we'll jump in here for match three. What do you guys think? Do you like to sideboard out Saga against Goblins, or would you prefer to keep it in? Because I legitimately don't know what's correct there. If our opponent's planning on being more aggressive, then definitely don't need to worry about the Sagas being in deck because they're giving us more time. But if they're like really like mulliganing to the combo like they should in the matchup, then I think it's... Or, or like mulliganing to Blood Moon as well. It's more reasonable, at least on the play, to keep in Saga, but maybe on the draw you shouldn't. Probably pretty play draw dependent. All right, on the draw. We have another turn three ring hand, and I've kept those before, so I'm going to keep it again. This Colossus needs to stop. This Colossus needs to be stopped. It can't keep doing this. It cannot keep getting away with it. I kind of had the feeling our opponent was on Rhinos. I couldn't really explain it, but I just, like, I just felt it. When we were on the draw, it just felt like Rhinos. Except it's not Rhinos, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, we get to do the uh, very hilarious bounce land, go to discard, pitch a creature. That'll be fantastic. Here goes a growth chamber, back up to eight cards in hand, pitch one cultivator colossus, your go. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite thing to do against Livian. I love this. I love it. 
I can't get enough of this. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll discard. You know what? I take it back, Cultivator Colossus. You're welcome in this opening hand. For once, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I spoke too soon. All the love and respect for Cultivator Colossus in the comments below. Charles Agent. Oh, they're just doing it. They, they're just going for it, huh? They're like, this is not getting better. Well, it's getting better for me, let me tell you. Oh, it's getting better for me. Ugh, that's all the lands we get. Man, what a shame. All right, let's pick up Forest and S Saga and Forest. And then we can go Dryad into Titan and kill them. Let's see. So we have nine. So we go Forest, Dryad, Titan, Double Valakut, play land after that, and they're dead. Uh, I guess they could have Subtlety. If they have Subtlety, it's kind of awkward. Let's play the Dryad real quick. They let it go. Well, we can either play around Subtlety or we can play around Force. I guess actually we can just go Ring, Ring. And then kill them next turn. That The only way we lose is if they have double force. Because next turn we can play... We'd have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, we can go double titan next turn. I guess that gives them a window to besage you. Or like bounce dryad. But even that's not like the worst thing in the world to happen. Honestly, I feel like ring ring is the better line here. Oh wait, we can't do both. Oh, I thought we still had a second land draw. Well, uh, now titan doesn't kill them. So I guess we go spelunking into ring. Still not dead here, I don't think, if they have the force for our ring. They might force the splunking, to be honest. Looks like they're thinking about it. I legit thought we had two land drops remaining. I don't know why, because I played the land before the Dryad. I even talked about it. Ugh. Oh, well. All right, they let the splunking go. We can also Grazer in the Saga, which I will do. I'll name, I guess, just Giant with this. Play Grazer. And now we just go Saga. Not Saga. We go one ring and pass. And next turn, we can just play two Primeval Titans with splunking. They have the force. Okay. Well, we have tons of blockers, so we're not super worried. Do we attack for the eight? Do we attack for eight? Let's see, we go block this, trump, block this. We're taking nine. If they outburst, we're taking, let's see, if we don't block, I feel like we can't attack here, to be honest. Attacking here would probably be uh, instant death. So now if they have outburst, things get a little weird. A shock in stomping ground. Interesting. Oh, that's right. We can't block the free wraith. So we'll just block here. Fine. Not even attacking with Oliphant. All right, we can fake them out with the one ring first if we want to. So we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we just have to double tighten here. So uh, how do we want to tap this? I guess we'll make an uncounterable, tap the Saga, because we're not using Saga this turn for sure. Leaving up the Boros Garrison in case we need it. Okay, they have Subtlety. If their last two cards are blue card and Subtlety, I will flip the table. That doesn't exist. Uh, it doesn't matter what we're doing here. So just hit the buttons. How about another Titan? Looks like this plan worked out after all. Okay, so we can haste here and then get double Valakut. Probably is the play. Yep, our opponent scooped it up. Cool. Winning game one against Living End is great. We only have two Endurance for this matchup and one Bog, which doesn't feel great. I'm not really into bringing in Tarask and Wormcoil just so we can discard them because they can beat these cards, but it's harder for them to beat these cards. One Ring is all right against them. It's bad against Force, as we obviously just saw, but I feel like having two Rings is fine. They sometimes have mystical dispute that they bring in against us just because having counter spell is better than having some like other random cards generally it's not that common though so i'm not worried about it radiant fountain helps us gain a little time against them if we need it they have forces and foundation breakers for our sagas i don't know if that makes me want to cut them though to be honest maybe we should i feel like it's probably not right to cut sagas maybe we could trim saga so we don't like have multiple copies and a dead map to draw although i guess map does find bog but it's kind of slow so i'm just submit like this all right, let's just uh, go to discard and pitch a big creature again. That's the plan. Before I learn the tech of discarding a big creature to hand size, my matchup win rate against this deck was abysmal, but now it's not. I mean, it's still not good. Like, I still feel like this matchup is unfavorable, but only slightly so, if you know the tech. <laughs> Endurance as well. I would like to go to discard. Goodbye, Primeval Titan. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this amulet down ASAP fast before they can force it. There we go. One more turn cycle and they might have been able to force. And now we have Endurance up, which we like. We can go Dryad here. I think I will. Just keep Bounce Land in hand, I think. Seems fine. We'll just play Slayers and pass to our opponent. No reason to play Grazer here. It's a pitch card for our Endurance and more mana down the line if we need it. They cast Endurance. Ah, they know the tech. They brought in... I rarely see living in players do this. They bring in Endurance to stop us from being able to bring back our dudes. I guess they saw it in game one, so they're like, oh, I should bring in Endurance because they're going to do this. Well, hopefully we can get them with our Endurance. Looks like they might just be going for it now. And they go for it with an Outburst. That's kind of wild. Okay, well, in response to that, let's get this Endurance on the board. Subtlety. 
Well, uh, definitely bottoming in endurance now. Dude, these stupid pitch elementals have ruined modern. Endurance included. <laughs> but we have a Titan to work towards. All right, let's play Besedro, I guess. <sighs> Opponent's on one card left, too. <laughs> well, I, our opponent brought in the Endurance, so props to them, I guess. Five plus six, 11. Dang, we're dead next turn. We have to kill them this turn somehow. Cavernous Hold's not gonna do it. <laughs> well, we got Clown on just then. Interesting. Yeah, I think I'm into the business of hitting Submit. I guess we are more likely to want Saga on the play, though. So maybe it's right to keep in the extra Saga. Ooh, we have Natural Bog. And we can do the uh, Titan pitch to hand size tech again and force them to have Endurance. We'll keep. And we can afford to make the risky play of turn one Valcut, turn two bounce land to go back up to eight. Because if they do have grief, then we can bog them naturally to catch back up. So should be safe to do. The next turn we're gonna drop to seven. Oh, this leads us this leaves us pitching on turn three. That should be fine though, still. Unless they have double grief. Cavern. Alright, here's a Simic. Pick up the Valcut. We can pitch next turn. Or just play bog. Hmm. Choosing between Bog and Pitching Titan is kind of interesting. I might be inclined to play Bog here. Spelunking too, huh? We could go Spelunking into Bog. We could go Cavern naming Onahan. Because we're not going to be able to pay for Endurance very easily. We could go Spelunking into Bog. But if they have Force plus Cycle into Untapped Living in, we kind of get wrecked. Oh, they would have to have exactly Force, which they might have. I think I'm willing to risk it. I think I'm willing to risk it. We'll name uh, Incarnation here. It resolves. Oh, and now we could Grazer in, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk it any further than this. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Although there's probably not a high chance that they would settle to your Grazer, but all right, that worked out. I like how that turned out. Next turn we can just cast Titan. To be honest, uh, maybe should have gone for the Grazer. To be honest, although two creatures ain't so bad. Once we untap, oh maybe they're just going for the Living End. Yeah, they're just going for it. Interesting. We can't pack here because we won't be able to pay for it on our upkeep. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to force them to settle to you, I guess. Put Growth Chamber into play. Pick up Bog. And I guess we Grazer in Sanctuary and haste off of Valakut, assuming that we're hasting in the first place. If they if they settle to the Grazer, then we can pack into Titan. <laughs> oh, wait. We'd have to pack for Azusa. Oh, they have Force? Ugh. Dang, dude. That punishes the Grazer line. <sighs> okay. Dang. I guess we're just getting outplayed. Or maybe I'm making bad plays here. That really sucks. They can give plus two plus seven trample to one of their other creatures. Man. Well, let me know if you think I've just horribly missequenced this game in the comments. Block, I suppose. Okay, well, we can besage you the architects if we want to. Even if we play Titan here, we're taking, and we get to block, which is not a guarantee. We're still taking, uh, seven damage. <laughs> hmm. Maybe should have gone for the pitching Titan line a long time ago. <sighs> All right. I mean, our only option here is to just go Titan and hope it works. Okay, Titan resolve. Now what? I guess we just have to set up Valakut. I guess Valakut Sun Home. So we could double strike. We could either double strike for lethal. Play second Valakut as well. We can either double strike for lethal, forcing them to deal with the Titan, or Dryad Valakut for lethal. So this gives us the most leverage here. Although we're not going to have Titan in play. So I guess this lets us draw a Dryad potentially. Or we can take six, seven, eight and block the Architect. Or nine and go to one and block... Um, actually, it depends... It, it, I don't think it matters. I guess we take nine if they target the shardless. We block the shardless. If they have outburst, we're dead, I guess. If we block here and they have outburst, we take five, seven, eight, nine, down to one. So blocking like this saves us from outburst. Oh no, no, no. We still take 10 because this gets plus one and it tramples over our titan. So we're dead to outburst no matter what happens. So we block the shardless. Okay, we're at one. Okay. So now we can double strike titan, swing. They have to do something about it. And then we go post, post combat dryad. Huh. Okay, we put in, I guess, Bog. Okay, they have three cards left, and they have to answer our Dryad. Second Dryad would be a great top deck. We don't have it. Well, here's a Summoner's Pact. You have a response. Should have pacted maybe during their turn, so they couldn't force us here. Okay, here's Dryad. Here's hitting five to make sure there's no yield. Saga, send both Valkit triggers at them. We go always, yes, always, yes, always yield. And Cavern. I think we actually won this game. <laughs> I definitely didn't do anything to uh, to help our chances. Or maybe I played it well. I don't know. I, I feel like I played it poorly, but got there out of luck. Whew. Oh, man. That was that was a sweater. All right. Last game. Ugh. Again, if you have any suggestions for how I could have played that game differently and not been as close to the line as possible there at the end, let me know because I can always improve my game in various matchups, including living in. So, all right. Last match for the 4-1. Be on the play against the Legacy Alters. We get a Saga Amulet Hand. Okay. Although we can just Grazer in Saga so we can start activating it, which I don't hate. 
Oof, interesting. We can Grazer and Saga, or we can play Saga Amulet. If we play Saga Amulet, that allows us to turn three combo very easily if we draw it. Our opponent molds to six. But if we Grazer in, if we Grazer in Saga, we can go Amulet, Bounce Land, Activate, or Amulet, Bounce Land, Grazer, and Land, Activate, and then be able to activate in our upkeep, or in our draw step, if we're not going to draw the threat. It uses both of our Grazers, though, which is probably fine, because we'll have double Amulet and two mana in play by the time we pop off the Saga, so Growth Chamber will go up to six. It's just, it's bad if we draw exactly Cultivator Colossus, but any threat still works with this line, so unless we get our Amulet Thoughtseize, I guess, but even in that case, we're still presenting threat, so we could even just, like, bounce land pick up Saga at that point if we wanted to, so I feel like this line's a little bit better with this specific hand. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, then go ahead and like and subscribe, because... I put my heart and soul into making these videos for you guys, and if you get something out of it, then show me some support. Opponent leads on Verdict Catacombs Pass. Dryad. Interesting. All right, well, here's Amulet into Bounce Land, into maybe Grazer Bounce Land, Dryad Bounce Land Activate? Or is that like a huge waste of resource? Because if we lose our Dryad, if we lose our Dryad, we still would have Titan mana. So... We Grazer in Bounce Land. We're not getting the second Saga token, though, so it would all be for one Saga token, which I don't think is really worth much. So let's just preserve our Grazer integrity here. Play Vile Titan Pass. We still get our one Saga token this way, actually, by untapping with the Saga. <laughs> so definitely this line's better. Our opponent is fetching. Let's see if they have the Fatal Push. No, just a Zeotaurus Proving Ground, the Jun Land, Swamp Mountain Forest. I don't know a deck that plays Verdant Catacombs, Zeotaurus Proving Ground, other than just like a, a Jun Midrange deck, I guess. Or like some sort of Jun deck. Maybe at this point we just go for map so we can set up Talaria West. If we go for Amulet, it just means that any threat that we top deck is pretty much lethal. But if we don't top a deck a threat, then we're not really in the game. We could also draw a one ring as well. So we could map potentially for Saga. Map for Saga. I don't hate that. Let's go for map for Saga. Start with an attack for five, though, before we take our expedition map out of play. Oh, wait, my bad. Only attack for two. Oh, well, doesn't matter. I guess if we had gone for the other line, we would have been able to attack with a construct this turn, but that's fine. So now we get to map for Saga, play Saga. Oh, we can even pick up land here since we have bounce land in hand. I feel like this is a pretty good way to continue the pressure. Again, being very patient with this Grazer. Maybe we come to benefit from the mana usage. Or maybe they Crocs us and we could discard the Grazer so we don't have to lose three life. That could happen. Okay, now we have Basic Swamp, Sing, and Thrill of Possibility. As additional cost, discard a card, draw to Grizzlebrand. We're playing as Reanimator? Okay, huh. Well, that might be a little hard to beat. Maybe not. Maybe we're fine. If we have the Titan on top, Thoughtseize. Okay, well, our Grazer, our Grazer, that's all I can say. Had the Thoughtseize to make sure the coast was clear, I guess. Good practice. Also costed them seven cards if they're putting this Grizzlebrand into play, which may not matter if they have haste for the Grizzlebrand. So it'd be another good matchup for having more than two Endurances. People always cut down on Endurances, and I'm, I'm just playing Stockless today, but I personally like as many as three or four Endurances. Two Endurances seems like too few to me. Profane Tutor. Okay, so we're not just dead. All right, tighten off the top, please. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice. All right, opponent, get out of this game. I've had enough of this. Keep bounce land in hand here because of value. Yeah, that's what I like to see. All right, if they had Gorios there, we were like dead to rights pretty much, but they didn't, and so we weren't. Endurance and Bog, please and thank you. And that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. I can cut Caverns. Colossus seems fine-ish. We may not have a whole lot of lands in hand, but if they're they're not playing a white splash, because otherwise they would have fetched a uh, a land like a Mardu land there that can tap for like solitude and ephemerate. So considering they probably don't have that, it's probably fine to cut the Colossus. We'll reevaluate later, and then we can trim. I don't know what else. Oh wait, no, we're on sixty one, so we just hit submit. <laughs> Still not used to the sixty one. Interesting hand. Saga, Saga, turn four, Titan. Ugh, I feel like we can do better than this. Thoughtseize isn't great against this hand. If we draw a Bounce Land, we get turn three, Ring. Which may not matter against Grizzlebrand, to be honest. Maybe it, maybe it's fine. If we Mulligan, we could find an Endurance, but we also might just get Thoughtseize out of the game. Debatable. Sun Home in hand is kind of annoying as well. This is close. It's actually close. If we don't draw green sources, we're kind of out of luck too. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you would keep this or not. I'm kind of inclined to Mulligan it, but... We can map for Bounce Land. All right, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. It's probably wrong, but I can't bring myself to Mulligan. I guess if they have Alpine Moon, we're in real bad shape. Of course, we're instantly drawing Valakut, one of the worst draws. <laughs> I mean, at least it's a land for getting to ring, but like anything that taps for green would have been better than that. Maybe they do have a white splash. Maybe we're about to get teared. Wear and tear. Maybe we could be boarding out Slunking against them. Oh, green. A natural state or Zasaga. Yikes. 
Okay. Okay, I see how it is. I didn't expect them to be playing green. We didn't even see green last game. Not that it would have really changed much. Ugh, and we're not, our draws are not being kind. We have to just play Saga and pass and let them natural state us again. Grizzly salvage. Grizzly freaking salvage. Holy, that is awesome. They chose Grizzlebrand, so they put Grizzlebrand in hand. Grizzlebrand in hand, huh? Gorio's in Galta. All right, our opponent is cooking. They are cooking. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna let them do it. Oh man. They don't even have to reanimate Crystal Brand. They just get to put that into play. Whoo. Oh man, I'm gonna have to show this to Mistaken. And Grief? And Grief? All right, we can't let them Grief because we don't want to give them information. That was sick. That was so sick. Okay. I'm happy to lose to that. Well, they have natural state. Does that make me want to board out sagas more? I mean, not really. I'm just going to run it back. Run it back. They probably, I mean, they could have Besager as well. I don't know if they probably have Besager. They could have Besager. Whew. You ever been got by the end of turn Grizzly Salvage into untap Gorio's Galta into play to put Grizzlebrand from hand on the battlefield? The very Grizzlebrand that you got off the Grizzly Salvage? Wow. All right, on the play. Probably a good sign here. Whew. We got a banger hand. Keep that. This is a saga going for map. This is why you never, ever board out expedition map. You never do it. You don't. You just don't. Unless you're boarding out saga also, map should be in your deck. I will stand by that. Don't natural state me, bro. You don't want to do it. You don't have the natural state. You don't think about the card natural state. No, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> no. No! Our expedition map, it was going to be so beautiful. All right, we can still top deck the bounce land here. All is not lost. Plus we have endurance. That's something. Our opponent's not killing us anytime soon. We might be killing them soon. We might not. See if they have force of vigor too. <laughs> oh, freaking natural state, bro. Freaking natural state. Glad that we're playing these two Microsynths. Now we can get three amulets. <laughs> oh boy. I guess this insulates us against another natural state. Tapped Zeotora's Proving Ground is fine. That one I'm a fan of. Grief. Ah, grief. And really, they can't do much damage to our hand. If they take Endurance, they potentially lose to a top deck Bounce Land. If they take Titan, or if they take anything that's not Endurance, they can't combo us. Yeah, they take Endurance. Okay, bounce Land off the top. Ba -ba 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 bounce Land off the top. Ugh, that's not a Bounce Land deck. That isn't a Bounce Land. Sheesh. All right, we're just going to pass. No, no reason to activate Microsynth now because they could just Natural State us. Okay. Bounce Land. Ugh, not like this. Not like this. Ugh. Natural state winning the game, huh? And Dotha Triome. So now they have white. Oh, they might have Leyline Binding also in their deck, apparently. Uh, are we going for the copy? I don't think so. Bounce land. Come on! Come on! Remember what I say all the time, that we're only like 30 to 40% chance to top deck a bounce land? I think the exact number is like 34 point something. This is what you're seeing. We took three draw steps, not drawing a bounce land. That is the majority case. That is the majority of the time scenario. Oof. Tolari West. Well, we can play Dryad here, I guess, which we probably should do using the Mycosynth filter ability. Rarely used, but often important mode. If we get one more land, we can pack for Endurance and use Dryad to pay for it. Also, shout out to Shieldred the Apocalypse, I guess. I don't know why this card would be in a reanimator deck, but Chalice on zero, that's fine. The only thing that matters here is Bounce Land. Not blocking. Never block. If we drew T-West, we could transmute for Bounce Land. Or we could draw Besaju. That does nothing. All right, here we go. Now any Into the Battlefield tap land lets us get there. We are attacking with Dryad. I don't think there's anything with Flash that we could be really attacking into here. Yield to the turn since we can't pack for anything with the Chalice on the board. What a weird game. What a weird game. Cool game. Cool match to finish off the league, though. I guess don't want to be yielding here. Wither Bloom to destroy an amulet. Uh, I'm, I'm good on that. Let me copy that real quick. That is fine. They milled Baseju and picked it up. Yikes. No. Wait, wait, wait. We might be able to beat Baseju. We can beat Baseju because we can float triple blue and pick up TOS and transmute for Bounce Land. If we draw the Bounce Land, that is. So we can actually beat Baseju. We could also bait the Baseju by Mycosynth copying an amulet and they blow up the amulet in response. Then we only go to one amulet in play, but we can still combo off of one amulet. They could Baseju Dryad here as well, I suppose. I don't think that would be particularly good. It just lets us tighten off of any ETB tap land. No blocks just yet. Might be in the territory of playing out Grazer as a chumper for this Shieldred. All right, Bounce Land. Bounce Land. One ring. Ugh! No! <laughs> We're so close. We have to play out the Grazer here. We're so close, but I don't think we're going to get there, if I'm just being honest, because we have to block. Okay, this is this is our last chance, pretty much, to top deck a bounce lane. 
We're going to lose to freaking Shieldred. I don't even think this card should be in their deck, if I'm being honest, but... <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Grief. Okay. I wonder if they have Scam here. If they have the Undying Evil for the Grief, too. <laughs> they take the ring. Okay. They must not realize we can transmute to you west and still set up Titan with double amulet through their Vasaju. It's a hard line to see unless you're a Titan player. Definitely blocking. That's a very easy one. All right. Still in Bounce Land waiting room. Bounce Land, come on. Six draws. Six. Hey, we got it. Okay. Okay. We're in business. We're going to play this immediately. Immediate Bounce Land to the battlefield. Hit five so we're not yielding to our own amulets somehow by accident. And they Vasaju, which is. F oh, wait. This is. Oh, this is not fine. Wait, no. Is it fine? We have to let this go. If we had a ETB tap land here, we would be fine because we could copy it with the Mycosynth. Ugh. We would need this stupid Summoner's Pact to be able to get there. Oh, I thought we had it. We're going to be one short. I thought we had it. Okay, we can still block the shoulder with Dryad after we transmute. So we have a shot next turn. Growth Chamber... And now I think we just go ahead and copy... Now I think we just go ahead and copy our amulet with the Mycosynth here. Because we're not going to have the mana to do so otherwise. Okay. Uh, I guess there's no reason to float the mana, so we'll just pick up the Simic here. Pass. No attacks. Whew. You don't kill Dryad. You just let us untap and tight. Double Titan, actually. We just have to remember not to go for Colossus, because then we die to Shieldred. <laughs> us drawing cards, killing us. No! <laughs> No! No! Why? Why? Oh my gosh. Ugh. Oh, it hurts, but I love it. But it hurts so much. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Well, that was an amazing conclusion to the match. One takeaway I have for the list is this Taras, it's so narrow. It's so narrow. It's against just four color, four color, and only four color. And like, is it worth it? I don't know. Honestly, even a second Cultivator Colossus could be more useful because second Cultivator is also good against four color. It just doesn't beat Elishnorn, but maybe we just lose to Elishnorn. Maybe that's fine. Otherwise, I don't have a whole lot of notes for this list. I think that you could mess around with a couple slots. Like, I think the Worm Coil and the Taras could be something else. Maybe a third Forest of Vigor for the Mirror. Um... I also, in kind of the opinion that Radiant Fountain is not necessary, but maybe it's better now that we have the ring. I haven't been playing a lot of Radiant Fountain. I do like having a couple Mycosynths. I think that they're important to have access to, even if you're playing some Spelunkings. Um, there's some who have been cutting Mycosynths, but I, I'm not a fan of that. I don't really have much else to say. That's going to be it for, for this league. We got <laughs> destroyed in that last match for no reason at all, uh, but... Honestly, that's just kind of how magic goes, and I'm not salty about it. It's more hilarious than it is anything else, and I'm glad that you guys got to see it on screen. Uh, 3 and 2 ain't too bad after all, so I don't have much else to say. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Redface Menace. Ha! You thought that I was going to do the sign-off? No. Like and subscribe.